What's up everybody? It's your girl Erica from the Classy Climb blog. Today's topic is, it's a trap. Uh, many people are saying, oh, Erica, you know it's so hard to get rich in America. You know African Americans are held down in America. Hispanic people are held down in America. And if you actually look at some of the numbers, you actually look at some of the spending, it's a trap. But it's a trap of your own making. Now people won't like me talking about this, but I've noticed a lot, especially on social media, Instagram, that there's been several young ladies who basically wrote articles saying, you know what, I got 30,000 in debt to keep up with the Instagram. I've seen right now, I have friends who are buying new trucks and new vehicles. Nothing's wrong with their current vehicle. They just want that trap. They want the trap. They don't have the mindset to go, you know what, they we're gonna be in a recession here in December or September of next year. And I should be investing in assets that are going to pay me just in case this job lets me off. Nah, they want boats and trucks and, you know, vacation homes and no assets. And it's a trap, but it's a trap of their own making. It's a trap of your eyes. It is a trap of marketing to yourself. You're marketing to yourself. Well, you know, I need that bigger truck. I told a lot of you on the channel that, you know, uh, I've been doing very well in my business. And I was like, you know, what? I'm going to go buy a Tacoma. Yep, I'm going to go buy a Tacoma. Because you know what? I just need a Tacoma. And I was like, that's ridiculous. You just bought a new car. You just paid your new car off. Like, enjoy the freedom. And many people get lost in that. They get lost in that chasing. They want to chase something. They don't have a bigger purpose. Now, when I ask people to write down their debt in my consulting calls, or I ask people to write down what are their goals, what are their long-term plans, a lot of people get fuzzy. A lot of people get shaky. A lot of times they're like, well, you know, I just want to go get this new car and, um, you know, that's what I'm currently working on. Or I just want to go get this new thing and that's what I'm currently working on. And sadly, that's so, it's not that it's short-sighted, it's not that it's small. If you want the car, get the car. If you want the house, get the house. But what else? What is your why? A lot of these people are buying things that are so um, materialistic driven that they're kind of shoots, you know, cutting their nose off to spite their face. They're basically saying, you know what? I want to feel pressure and debt from a new car. The new car or the new truck is so important that I got to have it. They got to have it. So when I talk about, when I talk about, you know, investing in a trucking company, investing in an uh, online business or spending your time getting extra income up via DoorDash, people are like, man, I want to hear that, Erica. I ain't trying to hear that. I want to hear the shiny shit. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I want to hear how to invest in real estate without spending any of my money or having any skin in the game. It's essentially what a lot of people want to do. And it's possible, but it's a lot of jumping through hoops. And a lot of you work jobs, so you're going to be jumping through hoops. And I remember a friend telling me several years ago, and I wish I could call him back and apologize to him. Because at the time he said, well, Erica, you know, most people get wealthy in their 40s and 50s. And I was like insulted, right? Because I was here, I was in my fresh 20s. I'm like starting a coffee shop and I'm like, I ain't trying to hear that mess, man. I'm trying to get rich like right now. I'm trying to get this money. I'm trying to stunt on them. And if I could go back and apologize to him, I would because he was right. Every bit of what he said to me was right. Most people don't get real wealth to their 40s, to their 50s, till they've been working several years, till they've been putting thousands of dollars away into an investment account. Now, there was a graph I showed you guys on Instagram, and people got hot with me in the messages. It showed the likeliness of being a millionaire after 40. For blacks and Hispanics, it was like, pff, pff, nothing, right? For Asians, it was through the roof. And for whites, they were kind of halfway there, but Asians were like through the roof. Now, why is that? Some people say, well, Erica, you know, racism and lending and laws and it's just the horror. And I go, look, look, boo-boo. A lot of times, I mean, a lot of uh, African-American people, Hispanic people who are approved for homes, but their amount is like 100000 or 150000 or two fifty, right? They ain't trying to hear that. They want the straight up $400,000 house. Don't talk to me about this starter home crap, Erica. Talk to me about the bigger, better house. And a lot of times it makes me sad because I'm like, you're missing out on all the benefits that you see a lot of uh, other people enjoying because what has happened, the other person has not only had a starter home, they've went ahead and rented out their starter home and got their second home. And then when they get their third home, they got two homes rented out. So, so sometimes people, 
they, they, they're going in the right direction. They got the income. They got pre-approved. Yeah. But they're, they're ahead of themselves, if that makes sense. They're ahead of themselves. They're ahead of their place and time. And so that's where I was when I first started that business. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to be rich. And he was like, dude, that's 40s and 50s. And it's, there's some truth to it. Because if you haven't done this in the 20s and 30s, and invest and invest and invest by the time you get to the 40s and 50s it's like whew, right because not that you're on a down slope as far as your who you are but financially most adults make the max they're going to make about 45 from about 38 to 52 i don't want to mess up the study but i think it was 37 to 52 that is like peak earning potential that is like peak earning money you know uh you know the management jobs you're going to get the executive jobs you're going to get you're getting them in that time frame in that window like the sales managers all those things you're getting in that 37 to 52 window but what happens is <clears throat> what I'm seeing and I'm be careful uh, and a lot of people start to downsize as far as spending as far as habits after 50s why because their kids go to college they don't need that big of a house anymore you know the certain car they wanted isn't exciting to them anymore lifestyle change lifestyle change but if you start later if you get your first house when you're in your 40s and you get the biggest house you could ever get in your life, you know, in your late, in, going on the backside of 30s into the 40s, you get the biggest house ever, you get the most expensive cars, your wife gets the most expensive cars, and you don't have a game plan, that's where I see a lot of people struggling to gain wealth in America. That is the real hiccup. And something I pointed out that people thought was funny was Michelle and Barack Obama still had student loan debt right before the run-up to the presidency it was like that book deal he got cleared the slate do you know what i'm saying and a lot of people don't understand when you get these hundred thousand dollar two hundred thousand dollar student loans there's a guy in our north carolina he was a doctor running for our office and he had like a hundred fifty thousand student loan debt still left over and people are like but you're a doctor and you're driving a jaguar yeah yeah people can drive nice cars they can drive nice cars all day uh, that does not mean the money is there, right? So again, when I talk about in the previous videos about mining the gap, what is mining the gap? The gap is how much you owe and how much you make. You know what I mean? It's like, what's that leftover income and what people are choosing to do with it? Because a lot of times what I'm seeing on the internet, people, and I'm just saying the internet to be nice because I don't want anybody to think I'm calling them out. But Instagram, Facebook, they're like, oh, yeah, Eric, I just paid off all this debt. I'm going to go get another thing. I'm gonna go get a new car. I'm gonna go get a new thing. And then it puts that pressure on them to run around like the rat race again. And, and people complain about the rat race, but they actually enjoy it. Studies actually show some people get a um, adrenaline kick out of like traffic, getting into traffic, which is crazy to me. But um, I could understand it, like trying to get to work, you dodging the traffic, you doing all that mess. Um, but I can see also where traffic gives a lot of people a lot of stress. So. The thing is, when I'm seeing people who are saying they want to be wealthy, you really got to look at what's your, your current spending habits. And, and most people can say, uh, you know, most people, most people to let you know, I spend a lot on food and drinks. Everybody, that's a lot of people, I think, in America currently. Food and drinks, entertainment. And, and you got to watch, you just got to mind the gap. And you got to like, when I talk about putting $1,000 in a group each month, to go buy another rental property people are like "Ooh, a thousand erica and, and and sometimes these are people making 10 12 grand a month once you put all their money together you're like boy where's your money going it's that gap they're not mining the gap they can't even peel off a thousand because one their taxes are too high you gotta adjust their w4 two inflation's kicking their butt three debt they have other debts that are eating away their income potential. Now, here's another thing. I'm just going to say this and, and not to be offensive, but a lot of engineers, a lot of people I see that are making high income earners, they spend that 22 to 32 kind of getting rid of other debt, just climbing it out, just knocking it down. And, and from the phone calls I've made, a lot of those people in that age range are just destroying debt, right? Getting rid of that debt. So at 32, if they want to take a trip all year long all over Instagram, and you're looking at them like, why are they traveling like that at 32 and not, you just got your entry-level job, you you can't do what they do. You can't be doing what, what they're doing. And so uh, uh, social media is a blessing and a curse because what it does is it creates the Jones effect. 
Um, it creates that people fear of missing out effect, that other people are living these fabulous lives and you're missing out. But that's not true at all. You know, run your race, focus on your thing. And, and a lot of times when people say about retirement, you know, retirement is a number, not an, uh, is, is a number, not an age. And what does that mean? Retirement is a number, not an age. And why you see a lot of people in some of these small southern towns or a lot of people retiring to the south you'll see them get a little eighty thousand dollar house finally pay that little eighty thousand dollar house off um and they got a little old paid off car and really their budget the consistency of their budget is like doctor appointments medicine um eating out at eating out at kw and lubies you know that's real retirement for a lot of people is being able to not have to work at 75 and 80 years old just keeping it 100 because there's a lot of people who didn't 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 do the things needed to be able to retire like that uh, now everybody doesn't want to retire in a little home or whatever like that and I, I get it I get it everybody wants different types of retirement there's no problem with that but I'm just telling you financially on paper those little old people who have owned their house out outright and owned their car outright and got got like $20 liability insurance on that Cadillac they live in the real dream because the, the debt is what is what's making a lot of you continue to work for years and years and years after you don't want to work. There's a lot of you who are very talented, very smart, and don't eat, shouldn't be working still, but you are. It's a numbers game. They don't teach it at school, which is wrong. They should be teaching this at school. They should be teaching accounting in school. But they took accounting out of a school. Why? What? Who did that help? If you take accounting out of school and you're giving people out here these shark, loan shark money, at 18%, 20%, 29%, 30%, then these people are taking it like, well, I just had to do what I had to do. They gave me this bad interest rate. But if they had accounting in high school, in middle school and high school, kids would know, oh no, that's, that's, that's bad math. That's terrible. That's a terrible idea, right? But because we don't have accounting in school, people don't know the easy math. And a lot of times there's a, there's a channel I, I like to promote a little bit. It's called Old Dogs Network. And it's old, O-D, O-L-D, and D-A-W-G, Dogs Network. And I laugh because a lot of the people coming on that show are, you know, they joke long in the tooth, right? But they're all like in their late 50s to 60s, 70s. And they're like, they figured out right in and there, oh, this retirement thing ain't going to work if I ain't got this amount of money. Or I don't have active income to draw from. And a lot of them get into real estate. Hence, that's the show, Old Dogs Network. But I love it because when I hear a lot of them talk, a lot of them will be like, yeah, my kids, I was having my first grandchild and I just realized I could not take off work to go see my first grandchild. And that was not working for me. And I was like, the power of a why. When you have a why that's strong enough that you like, this must change. But that's really why I always tell people, um, you gotta have a why. You gotta have a why. And, and when your why is strong enough, you'll find it right there's a lot of guys you know um i was watching some trucker channels because i wanted to talk to a few truckers about me starting this you know trucking company and all that good stuff and a lot of them are like everybody that starts trucking driving they think i'm gonna make all this money my first year i'm gonna make all this killer bank and then they then a lot of guys quit right they quit like six months later because they like i just want i want to make the money and be at home he's like you don't do that at the same time that's not how that works there's no delayed gratification there's no kind of mental registering that you can't make all the money on the road and then come home next weekend and be in the club with your road money that's not how that works it's just not how it works i know several truckers who have homes full of tvs they ain't never home but they got six tvs and game systems and cars and when you really think about it you're like man you make really good money but what the fuck are you doing with it i had a friend go work in the oil rigs oil fields and um and he went up there bought an infinity and was like, man, I don't blew most of my money. We're like, you made ninety thousand dollars. How? How? How, bro? How, Dre? His name ain't Dre, so I'm just saying. But how, Dre? And honestly, he ended up getting married because he was like, I need someone to help me settle my debt, keep my debt focused. And so there was a girl he was still, you know, ex girlfriend he was still, still in love with, and went back and married her. And I laugh about that, but that's that's where some people are. Some people actually do need somebody to keep them accountable, so they get married. Now, now, why am I sharing that story and sharing other stories? Because here's the deal. 
I really truly believe probably in the next five to ten years we're gonna have some economy shifts I don't know if you guys have noticed the news of all the teachers striking everywhere like I'm, I'm a teacher I can't afford to live you know this this is crazy the income is, is struggling as a teacher it's teacher strikes all over it's like 20 states with teacher strikes but here's the thing you're gonna see a lot more women leave the workforce and it's just the numbers it's just the math it's just a lot of these companies with customer service departments are going to send them overseas. There's just a lot of the, a lot of fields that women work in other than nursing uh, and other than a few other ones that like they're going to be reduced in size. They just are. They're going to be reduced in size. And so it's better to be smart. It's better to be well invested than to be in these fields upset at the crunch coming. Now, there's something I say that people get mad about. And I say you're going to see a lot more people get married and a lot more people cohabitate. Now, you know, that people may be saying men are going their own way. No way, Erica. But here's the deal. There's a high group of percentage of men who are what we would call forced loneliness, right? Where people are just not interacting with them. People are not spending time with them. People are not dating them for whatever reason. And as the economy shifts and numbers shift, you know, I just feel like some of these people, some of these people are going to get spouses and they're going to get roommates and they're going to get girlfriends. Not because people are shady and, and want to take advantage of them but people start readjusting what's true goals when it comes to money when people get broke they start going whoa whoa wait a minute here uh let me rethink about that maybe i should rethink your offer just saying it's something i'm personally seeing i'm seeing some older ladies get married and i'm like why are they getting married they, 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 they don't. because times is tough right and that's just outside not inside you know i don't know the, the, the details but I'm seeing a trajectory of many women of certain careers going man money's tight and changing minds and so I feel this is something we're going to see more of uh, you know again 2016 was the lowest year of divorces ever lowest in, in history ever since divorce became an option and I think that's because of finances now I would love for it to be people were like I love my spouse they're the best spouse ever I want to stay in this marriage I would love for that to be people's reason but I have a feeling it's because and I've heard sad stories of people being like yeah I make 50 she make 50 but you know you know they really can't afford to leave each other they can't afford to leave each other that's 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 sad but you don't have to be in that position and, and this is why I do this channel so that you can be in a better position you know people will call me and be like yeah we really want this new truck and I'm like that's really what you want to update your credit for? That's really what you want to clean your credit for is a new truck? Nothing else. And I and I always realize it's, you know, sometimes it's a mindset, you know, it's a mindset thing and people just ain't there yet, you know, they ain't there yet. So I gotta be patient and respect. Hey, you spent the dollars, I will do the service. I will help you because that's what's up. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm driving on the highway so I can't really stop and read what y'all are saying. But I just saw Ben the bartender say it's cheaper to keep her and I wanted to laugh. But it is. It is cheaper to keep her. I'm seeing some people who are like, we're going to stick this marriage out. You know, and I'm like, it's that money. Okay? So, there's just some things there where, and I'm seeing a lot of older guys who have money get married. And people may say whatever they want about it, but when you have a certain amount of money, you can afford to bring somebody into your life per se hey as long as she's signing prenup she don't take nothing from you you just add a person into your house now people may say erica is more than that which it is let's keep it 100 it very much is it is you know bringing people in a relationship marriages and cohabitating is a serious thing and i i respect people's choices and decisions i'm just saying what i'm seeing from an economic perspective and uh and, and if you read the book upside that's a good indicator book um, there's several other books that are really good indicators that tell you that people are having four, five, seven, eight, nine people in a house. Now, I'll tell you this. I, I just moved from the house I was at that you guys saw a lot of the videos in. And the next door neighbors beside us was two married couples. Let me say that again. Two married couples. Young married couples. Husband and wife living in the master bedroom, renting out a room to their friends that were married. Now, I don't know about you. But when I get married, I ain't getting married to somebody so I can live in another house with some other people. That doesn't make any sense to me. But that's what they were doing beside us. They had two dogs, her dog, and that couple's dog. And I thought, this is some weird shit over here. But that's the economic times we're in. That two married couples, all four grown adults working, are living together in a nice neighborhood in, in one house. 
to save that money. I, I know two sets of dudes who all bought a house together. So, I mean, I'm just telling y'all, it's really... Thank you, Brandon Green. I appreciate it. the super chat. I'm just, I'm at a stoplight, so I'm not driving right now. I'm at a stoplight. I can, like, do a quick scan of your comments. I just want y'all to realize when I'm on the road, I'm trying to be on the road. I don't want to wreck or anything. But, Dad, yeah, just think about that. Two married couples, young, vibrant, muscular. I'm not going to say it like that. But, you know what I mean? Like, married couples living together in one house. That's, that's crazy. i rather live in a small apartment. Like, I even know married couples who are living with their parents. And so it's like, when people try to tell me the commies great, Donald Trump made America great again, it's nice out here in these streets, you know, unemployment's the lowest it's ever been. I'm like, but I'm in the street. I'm actually in a service. In I, I know what I'm talking about and I, and I see what's going on, right? And so when I'm encouraging y'all to invest, when I'm encouraging you guys to team up with people and invest, like, like there's two guys, I got on a phone call consult with them, and they were asking me about the trucking thing, and they're like, well, I got some money, he got some money, we can go buy a truck. I was like, that's perfect. Teamwork makes the dream work. I'm going to Detroit, and I'm all about some teamwork, make the dream work. People are always offering deals, but I'm like, hey, boo, it's gotta be, it's gotta be some teamwork here. You can't just jump out on the limb, and I think, honestly, you know, if we're honest, teamwork is a great place to start i'll say that and, and, and i'm driving again so I, I mean i'm getting ready to pull up at this coffee place and it'll be at a stop but i saw todd capital say make make america great again magna but that's the thing and i think i'm appreciative as well for donald trump coming in office i know y'all get mad when i say that but it's because people woke up they're like "Ooh," you know and it's also a lot of people are getting near that retirement age i'm talking to a lot of older um hispanics and african americans on the phone calls and you guys are like, man, the feel-good 90s. And I'm like, the feel-good 90s were almost 30 years ago. If you really think about it. It was almost 30 years ago. And, um, and yeah, Bill Clinton, there was good economic times where Bill Clinton was in. Uh, you know, but again, at the end of the day, that was a long time ago. And you're on the end of your kind of career where you want to retire. What is the way to retire? That's why I'm suggesting Old Dogs Network. That's why I'm suggesting y'all to read about real estate and having an active income source you know it don't make it doesn't mean you have to drive the truck it doesn't mean you have to landlord the property i'm just saying these are good opportunities for you guys to see things okay it's a really great opportunity and 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 that's a part of it you know how do people get wealthy they they watch they, they watch the eggs in the basket right and a lot of you are taking your eggs and throwing them out the basket to go get trucks and boats and i think i told you guys about the guy who's making seventy thousand dollars a year he's a, he got a two-year community college degree as an electric electronical what do you call it? electric he's an electrician but he he does he works with the gas company basically but he's an electrician and he was like yeah i saved all this money getting this community college degree i'm so excited i'm gonna save more money i'm gonna make all this money so yeah he was making seventy thousand a year with the uh the company up there in connecticut but at the same time at his work site, and, and I'm just to give you a truth, the guy's white. And so at his work site, all these white guys are like, you got to get a new truck, you got to get a boat, you got to get a camper. And the dude's like, well, nah, man, I'm just going to drive my little Honda because like, you know, yeah, I make 70, but I just moved in my own brand new apartment and I, and I got a little bit of money and, and I, I, I don't want to do that. And they're like, nah, man, now nah, get rid of that old Honda, get you a truck, get you this, get you that. And he was saying, you know, he would pack his lunch to work. He back his lunch to work and people were like making fun of him. Now you may say, Erica, I don't care if my coworkers make fun of me, but imagine being a 22 year old male. You just got your degrees, your community college degree. You at this job site and that's the culture every day while you at work. That's the culture. That's the culture. And he said he felt like all the guys there were working 60, 70 hours a week, taking all the overtime because they had to. They had the camper. They had the truck. They had the bigger house. They had all this stuff. And then they were complaining about having to work so much overtime. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, like they, that's the trap. That's the trap. That's the trap I'm trying to tell you guys about. Do not put yourself in a trap. And I, I'm, it's a trap, bro. Like, you have to be careful who you're around. And, and when I talk about Todd Capital or Black Seed Fund or all these different groups, or I talk about the crowdfunding sites, I mean, you, you got to connect with people. Like even this summer, Andre Hatchett of Mobile Notary, he's traveling 
doing some live show live you know stuff this this live webinars or whatever live shows or whatever and i was telling him the same thing that i was getting ready to go visit about 15 different youtubers in my sphere of finance and stuff like that i'm going to california i'm going to las vegas i'm going to a few places because you got to get out and meet these people because sometimes you're in an environment where everybody's talking about getting boats and cars and vacations and they broke and you have to be you have to watch your mind because if you don't watch your mind these people will convince you of some dumb crazy mess some dumb crazy mess and it's really you got to be watching what what you do and who you hang out with and i'm always wanting people who are going to help me level up keep me accountable i mean i literally was talking on the phone with dre and one other person i was like i want to go to italy man i done made this money this summer i done made this money i'm about to just take a month off and go to italy and he was like this is your highest time of the year you have phone client phone calls booked out for two weeks you got all this stuff going on are you for real right now and i was like thank you for calling me out on that because some of my other friends and even my mom was like yeah girl take a vacation do it girl do it go live your life and i'm like mom like i'm booked up for two weeks i'm booked up for two weeks over here i'm moving money around to get investments i'm about to buy a truck that's this is not the prime time to go on vacation but that's just it like if you if you let yourself be around certain people they will convince you that yeah yeah buy the truck girl buy the truck girl go on the vacation girl you bought you made the money girl yeah do it and it's like you have to catch yourself Rosalind Joseph says she's filling out the application for Todd Capital right now. Thank you, Rosalind. <laughs> but that's just it. Like, Dre checked me in that moment, you know? And then the fact is I, <laughs> you know, exactly. This is not prime time to go on vacation. And what's crazy is I, I got a personal trainer, and I've paid for this personal trainer six months in advance, right? Like, all the way six up. And, and Dre was like, what about your personal trainer? And I laughed because I didn't even think about all the commitments you know what i'm saying that you uh, i invested in but i thought it was funny i was like you're right i did i invested in a personal trainer i invested in like this and that you know oh yeah like you know stay focused and you can get brainwashed into being like it's vacation time it's vacation time you know what i mean and so i'm trying to find a way for more of us to meet and greet each other you know because some of you signed up for the real estate mastermind with hood states thank you you in there meet and greet in there hook up connects buy properties together in there some of you have bought courses some of you have done a lot of things and and, and i'm gonna try my hardest to go to jacksonville florida and tampa florida um and there's some other places i want to go and try to like get a, a like in-person vibe right like like meet each other you know you guys might be the key to like i, I was doing them interviews of business owners in tampa i interviewed seven business owners in tampa and they all were individually doing real estate and what was funny is I was like, y'all should all know each other because then y'all could buy more real estate. And it was like the light bulb went off when I talked to all of them. They were like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, and, and that's the thing. When you don't have anybody connect to, th that's, the, that's the problem, you know? And, 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 and what I'm trying to get people to see is like the top 20% of Americans are living well. We call them yuppies. There's a book called the... Um, the upside down of america what is it i think it's the it might be the downfall of america i hate to say it but essentially the book was like 20 percent of americans there's a 20 percent that have good jobs i'm in austin and i can agree they got good jobs they go to some religious activity once a week they're married or they're in good relationships and they live in life and the recession didn't really hurt them last time and it ain't gonna help hurt them the next time it come around because they're in a a, a sphere of like this 20% on the top. And that's where I'm trying to be. I ain't trying to be hurt for the last recession. I ain't trying to do it. Like, I remember last recession in North Carolina, in Charlotte, there were homes going for $25,000, $10,000, newly built homes that were $75,000. And because the owner got so depressed, they walked away. And you're like, no, why, why are you leaving this house? It's full of value. Don't leave this property. But that's what they were doing. They, were, they just walked away because they thought it would never go back up they'd be underwater forever and of course some of that short time thinking and some of that was countrywide being horrible to people and destroying people and mortgages but at the end of the day it's like i missed out on the last recession to cash in and now as this one comes around i'm like i will not miss out you know but how do you not miss out you got to be connected to people 
that you got to have people in your Rolodex. Like a lot of times what I meet is people either have the money and no connections or they don't have any connections and they don't got a lot of money, but they got, they smart, they resourceful, they'll work their butt off. And you got to get around people. And, and in America, we're so into our little bubble or it's just, you know, my husband and my wife and me, and we just do our own thing and they don't connect with other people. And what happens is how can people give you deals? Right now, I opened my email list this morning. I had 10 different emails from people who were like, what's up? You know, um, we got red hot fire deals. I got some deals in Baltimore. I got some deals in this part of Maryland. I got some deals in Florida. I got some deals in Texas. And it was crazy because I was like, man, I need some more money. Right? Because at the end of the day, like all those deals, all those people were doing, you know, is marketing. Direct response marketing. Hey, you're on my email list. I got a deal. What's up? I got a deal. And... And a part or two, you know, I see what you said, Bella. Most people have their priorities messed up and worry about other people. Not only that, sometimes your family. I, I, I know doctors who are the wealthiest person in their family, and it is an unspoken expectation that they are about to come out of pocket with that money. You're going to help mama. You're going to help daddy. Got five siblings and nobody's throwing in but the doctor. You know what I'm saying? It, there's a lack of accountability there. So that's why I'm always trying to tell people, you, you need to get around people who are moving and shaking and trying to invest. And, you know, I promote Thai Capital a lot on here. I talk about the Tulsa Real Estate Fund on here. I talk about several groups on here because I want you to go see for yourself. If you bought the book, congratulations. Thank you for buying my book. I really appreciate that because um, we have a lot of new people on here. We have about 2,000 new subscribers on here. So thank you if you bought the Smart Farm Millionaire book. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you guys, hey, I'm totally fine with you guys sharing email on this channel up in the comments with each other. Just be respectful. Don't email people that didn't ask you to be emailed. Just that's all I'm saying. Put your email out there if you want to. That's fine. You know, um, or hit each other up on Instagram. I'm okay with that. So let me roll through some of this. Hey, Frankie. Hey, Marcus. Insight. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, you're talking about their inner strength. Mm -hmm. People, VC people really don't know how to manage their money it's 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 the bulk of my calls are people making lots of money they just spending it and, and you go well, well let's write down what you spend like right now if you ask me and i ain't gonna tell you but if you ask me what's in my three or four bank accounts or four of them that are business related i can tell you the number i can go look in quickbooks on my cell phone and tell you the number right now what's in each account right now i'll, I'll talk to phone people and they don't have no clue i don't know what's in there i don't know I have no clue and they're not dumb people let's make that very clear they're not dumb people i'm talking about engineers i'm talking about doctors i'm talking about pharmacists i'm talking about well-to-do people who just sometimes they don't know they're, they they their focus is not there so oh yeah yeah i mean when people buy a house this is the thing when people get ready to buy a house they clear it is nice they clean it up they get ready to buy the house Offers coming in the mail. Offers coming in the mail. Offers coming in the mail. So they, we, we try to get them. If you're a real estate, and you're like, don't do it. They get in the house. Okay. Once they get in that house, I can tell y'all right now, the next 200 pieces of mail are going to be all new homeowner mail sending them credit card offers. When I got my new office, Amex, A M E X credit cards offers every week for eight weeks. I was like, whoa. And, and it is because I think it's because the office space it is a more higher end office space in Austin I think that's what it is but like I was like every day opening my box like Amex what is the deal Capital One Spark all these just send us offers 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 it's it, it's a hard temptation but you gotta know you gotta have your why you gotta have your big reason thank you trending business oh yeah yeah Frankie listen yeah repossession car repossessions happen to everybody now here's the thing there's a book called um the truths they don't want you to know about debt kevin trudeau he went to jail but at the end of the day kevin trudeau wrote a book and he made like 50 million dollars off infomercials that night and in the book he was saying a lot of these companies if you're paying 100 or 200 dollars a month even if the debt's crazy high they can't foreclose on you they can't take the car because what you're doing is you're still paying and you can argue in court that I was paying all the way up to the day they took it. What are you talking about? But see, people don't know that. So people just don't pay. I I've met people who don't pay for a year. Don't pay for a long time. You're like, what are you doing? That's Throw something at it. If you ain't got $100, you need to go out in your day and figure out how to get 100 Throw something at it. That's right, Insight. From, from their experience, they say you don't actually need much money as you think to be well off and comfortable. You don't. 
a lot of people are at their peak spending about 40 to 50 55 that's your peak vacations with the kids at Disneyland. That's your taking the grandkids to Disneyland. That's your, your, your work, job, you know, all this stuff. That's your peak. On the back side of that, which I hate to say that makes people sound like they're dying, but on the back side of that, you're not spending as much. You're not doing as much. You're not, you're not crazy traveling at expensive levels as much, right? And, um, and that's the key. That's the key. Like, like people don't really know the amounts they need to retire right like i've heard people say well eric i'm gonna need 10 grand i'm like 10 grand what you doing you live in the middle of nowhere georgia your house is paid off what you need 10 grand for now i'm not saying they should shrink their goal of what they think their living should be but they need to really say okay well how am i spending 10 grand is it all eating out and dining okay just be honest just know what you what you spend it on No, no, now, Frankie, I know you're talking about Clever Girl Finance, but here's the kick on that. I went to people, I went to school with people, and their parents weren't, weren't well to do. And when they left, their mom and dad gave them about three grand to get in that $55,000 condo and townhouses in Raleigh, and it changed their life forever. You know, when I hear people say, well, my kids move back in and I can't get them out, that really what you're telling me, and I hate to say this, is you're poor, and you couldn't afford to either give your kid money to get their own apartment, the down payment, the first months rent for the apartment or you couldn't give them the money to get the down payment on a townhouse or something very cheap starter home and when people hear that they get like oh they get in their feelings i understand but i'm just saying that's what that usually means e even um i have a friend who's who grandparents pay for every single grandchild to go to college for free but they still feel like they work very hard how dare you take away their very hard work I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's some situations out there and I worked in a financial aid office and so I have like, I'm not gonna say I don't have sympathy for people, but I worked in a financial aid office long enough to know that there were countless scholarships. People just didn't want to fill them out. They didn't want to do that. They ain't got time for that. That's how they acted. There you go, Thomas Jackson. Sometimes you do, you do have to delete Facebook. Like I'm almost to the point where I'm like, when I want to take that vacation, I'm gonna bounce for a little bit. right yep people blowing it well that's the thing you know here's the thing i've met several people who've paid off 20 30 40 thousand dollars in debt didn't tell any of their friends because they knew it would mess up the momentum straight up they knew it would mess up the momentum if they told them people would be questioning them Yeah, there you go. Listen, Melita Richardson, she kept her job. There you go, girl. Keep it. Now she got 4000 Hey, Been the bartender. Hey, told her son same thing. Thank you, Brandon Green, for the super chat. Dang, been, been the bartender. Sugar daddy settling down. He need a helpmate. Listen, listen, I'm not judging people. I just know I go to a church of very well-to-do people. It's a it's an upper income church, and a lot of the older men, like 50 years old, all of a sudden jumped up, got a wife, and they ain't get a young wife either. They got like a 39 year old, like companionship travel friend wife, and I'm like, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Now there is one dude in there who's 50 and had a baby, and I was like, who does that? Now you gotta, now you done started the rat race all over, baby. Asian people know how to save money. Okay, there you go. Been the bartender. I can't have no other people hearing my spouse. Okay, stop. I just realized what I was reading. Stop. <laughs> oh, man. Apartments do suck. I work in the apartment industry. And this is why I'm telling y'all these financial things because I'm in Austin. And it is has 150 people moving here a day. There's 2,000 people moving a day to Houston. And... Well, it used to be 2000 a day, but there's 293 moving a day to Dallas. But apartments are sitting empty 30, 40, 50 percent. What's happening? People are co cohabitating. They're cohabitating. They cannot afford to live on their own. That is an economy sign. You need to look at the signs. You have to really pay attention. And it's, it's just so crazy to me. Yep. Melita, read what she just said. Very little college up, just a few credit cards. Yep. Teamwork does make the dream work.
And as Erica says, three things that keep Trump winning, confidence, execution, teamwork. Hey, Melita says she's going to get her first tax lien auction property in Gary. There you go. These broke fools will leave you broke like them. That's very true, Thomas Jackson. You might have to find them on the internet, as Todd Capital said. Thomas Jackson said, I'm investing with Utah Capital soon. And the bartender. Detroit's the hair capital from the work. Ty Capital said double down. Yes, that's right. Okay, so Bella, here's the thing on the hair. I hate to say this, but I worked at several jobs where I felt like the white managers were basically saying, you need to, your hair's too big today. You got to do something about it. I'm like, this is normal curly girl hair. And other curly girls that would come in there that, you know, so the thing is, do your hair, but do it within reason, right? Like I had to explain to several, several of my white friends, there was a woman who had her hair done, but she was poor. But she had very simple braids, like very simple, cheap braids, like something like a maintenance hairdo and they were like well she got money to spend on braids and i was like y'all that hairstyle right there looked like a 70 dollar hairstyle it looked real cheap like she's just doing that just to maintain she's broke and it was very funny because it was it was one of those real moments where it's like culturally they didn't know that they didn't understand that your real friends will tell you things that won't always make you happy that's very true Kristen Thomas looking at people to talk to in ATL. Go check out 100% Finance, guys. Thomas Jackson right behind you, Rosalind. They going to Todd Capital. All right, let's see. Okay, see, here's the thing. I have a friend who, nothing's wrong with their car. They're selling it. They just want to have a new truck. And then I got another friend. Nothing wrong with her car. They just want to sell it. They want to they wanna have the new new. They want to have the new smell. Why not? I don't understand. You're like, that's crazy to me. Ben the bartender said, it's hot outside. People trying to spend their money. I want to be there to get it. You can. Bella Fam said, come to New York City and NJ. Every time I try to schedule a trip to New York City, something happens. And I'm not trying to say it as a jinx thing, but every time I try to schedule, something crazy happens. And it's, it's weird. I don't know how to explain it to you, but it's like, you know, I went to go see the Christmas lights or something and my friend couldn't do it. And it's, it's crazy. Say it, Shay says, hey, everybody. Aaron Johnson, hey, everybody. Been the bartender. I was in a sucky position. Last recession, no more. That's right. Let me see. I'm going through, going through. Hit the like button. Yes, please. Thank you, Ben the Bartender. Everybody hit the like button. It's like 79 of you in here right now. And sometime I'll go at the end of this and it'll be like 130 of you in here. Hit the like button. Money cannot buy happiness, her universe. You are very correct. Money cannot buy happiness, um, but it can buy you options. It can buy you choices. You know what don't buy you happiness is being poor and needing medical care and you can't get it. That's that's really terrible. <laughs> Jim Malik does finance tools of happiness. There you go. There you go. Money doesn't make you happy, but it bought him a bike and that bike makes him happy. You know what? Here's the crazy part, Bella. I was driving from um, Washington, D.C. to go see my aunt in this part of Maryland. And as I was leaving, I was like, look at these hood areas. Oh, I'm so scared. But I also was like, look at the investment opportunities. Oh, I could look at that one. I mean, it was your mind said it's so crazy. Cosmic Wisdom, thank you to catch me on the live stream. There's also many tools out there for folks to track their income and automate your cash flow. It's very true. I, I'm always re recommending Acorn app. Um, 
mint app there's you know i'm always recommending something on this channel but it's hard for people <coughs> Trying to build a life to enjoy, yes. Trent Davis. <laughs> Nisha L. Holmes, listen. I lost my job renting a room at ATL to Uber for a month so I can get my money up. Honey, Uber, DoorDash, Lyft, put it on your phone, turn that phone on, do hours of work, you can get it. I mean, there's a guy I know he made about $6,000 last month. Now, Austin's a different market from ATL, but at the end of the day, he put in the hours. Now, once here's my thing. If you put in the hours and you can go get your new place, or you can put in the hours until you get your next job, it's a different, it's just different. <coughs> no, you don't need an office space for the notary, Malik. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I got to get this water. It's just, it's hitting me. It's hitting me. Okay, sorry about that. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the name of the trucking course? It's at Hood Estates. I use personal capital. It's like mint, but a grown up. There you go, Cosmic Wisdom. Hilltop is still going to take me some time. Like, I had 10 phone calls today. I, I still missed two of my phone calls with clients today. <clears throat> and um, I record videos in the afternoon and sometime in the morning to put it in the course and then show you some of the stuff in the behind the scenes. Then, because I have a business partner, I have to cover some information because it shows some of his information. Been the bartender. Money can buy therapy. Yes, it can. Mark Smith will know. will have more information later for that. Money does provide medical options, banking on money. <coughs> Sorry about that. I do recommend QuickBooks. I think it's worth it. It's provided me a lot of traction. I was able to track how much income I made, the graphs. I can print out a P&L system and I can turn around and <clears throat> provide that to the bank. Hold on y'all, we're gonna, we're gonna run into this location real quick. Y'all get to go with me real quick. And then we're going to close it out. Been the bartender. I'm so sorry. I just want an ice latte real quick. What you say here? Uh, what size? Uh, medium. Yeah. Let's do the... You guys, I'm going to let you flip the camera around and let you see. Does everybody see? This is my favorite coffee place. They close a little early now. So I just want the um, white gold drink. White gold? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about doing this when I go to Detroit, everybody, just for the record. I'm trying to not show my wallet here. <laughs> there you go. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. No, I'm not feeding Bay again. I can't tell y'all about that. I can't find out about that person. It is Adventures with Erica Day. All right, let's see what we got. I will, Cam Cam, I will film about Detroit. But you guys, I'm going to run for the day. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day.